I spent the better part of the past two years road tripping all across the United States, little road trips, big road trips, all kinds of trips in my Ram ProMaster van. I've learned a lot of things over the past couple years of what I really need to make a road trip go smooth. And I think this applies to, you know, people who just got a van, people who have a camper shell on the back of their truck, long haul truckers, or if you live out of your uh, Mazda 3. Your first order of business needs to be getting a modern car stereo head unit that can interact with your smartphone, whether it's Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This is non-negotiable. I'm telling you, it's worth the money. It's a pain. I tried to install this head unit DIY. I failed. I brought it to a car audio shop. They failed. I had to bring it to a second car audio shop. They got it going. Total hassle, totally expensive, totally worth it. And while you're at it, just get better speakers, get an amplifier, get a subwoofer. If you care about audio quality, go all out. Buy once, cry once. I had to deal with all that stuff later on down the road. <laughs> Doing it yourself, it is a pain and the spaghetti wires keep me up at night. If I ever have to go back in and fix a problem, oh. The benefit of having one of these head units that has Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is you can control and see what's going on at a glance. It keeps your eyes on the road much more than messing around with your phone. Everybody does it. It's a horrible thing to do, but it's much better to kind of have the navigation to be able to look down real quick or see what song is playing and be able to skip it real quick with this head unit versus fumbling around on your phone. Another great thing about these units is that you can listen to a text message as it comes in. We're all guilty. We see that little notification pop up. Ooh, somebody just texted me. I've got to see what it is. It's so hard to resist. But when you have one of these head units, you can just say, hey, listen to my text messages. It comes out in the robot voice. Then you can actually reply with your own voice. It does voice to text and send it out safe and sound. My next little piece of gear that I absolutely love now is my iAudi phone mount. I had a junk phone mount for two years. It was an expensive phone mount, but it was a piece of junk. It was too rigid, it couldn't move around. I hated it, but I never would take the action to actually fix it. I finally fixed it recently. I'm very happy with this one. It swivels around, it, it's a phone mount. It does everything a phone mount should do, but still, I have to recommend it. Now that you got that out of the way, it's time to do a little cable management. We've all been guilty of having our charging cables flipping and flopping all around. In the van, you want to keep stuff secure and out of the way, so I use these little sticky dots. I have charging cables all over the van so I can charge when I'm driving, so I can charge when I'm sitting at my little desk here, so I can charge up while I'm sleeping in bed. And if you don't manage where those cables are, they get lost, they fall down, they get tangled up, they disappear, they catch on fire. You gotta take care of your cables and this is a great way to do it. I know this will not be very popular, but I have to speak my truth on the next one. It is well worth the money to get yourself a Yeti Rambler tumbler, 30 ounces, perfect drink holder size, I have gone through so many different types of drinkware over the past two years. This thing is the best. I've spent more than $100 at this point, and so this thing's a bargain at 38 bucks. But still, 38 bucks for a cup, I know. But I love it. I use it all day, every day, at home, in the van. It's worth it. Yeehaw Yeti. How about we do a little fun one here? You gotta get yourself a pair of binoculars. I've only had these in the van for maybe a year and they stay hidden away most of the time, but every once in a while you're like, oh, get the binoculars. Ah. I was just on the California coast and saw a bunch of humpback whales, seals, caribou. I saw all kinds of stuff on my last little road trip. If you're doing the national parks, if you're doing the California coast, anywhere, anywhere there's something going on and you wanna get a better look, get some Binox. Another really fun one for me, which I don't know how much it translates to the rest of you, but I got an altimeter in my van. And I just think it's the coolest thing when you're going over these big mountain passes to glance down, you're like, okay, we're at 4,000 feet. Now we're at 5,000 feet. Now we're at 8,000 feet. Holy moly. I love knowing the altitude that I'm driving at and where we're at, where you're camping at, all that stuff. Just like I think most people want to know the temperature outside. I like to know the altitude outside. 
And speaking of the temperature, I love knowing the temperature inside the van. Mostly when you're camping out somewhere really cold and you can wake up in the morning and say, holy crap, it got down to 19 degrees inside the van. I have one of these carbon monoxide detector slash thermometers. Really nice. It's been in the van for two years. I had it up on sticky tape. Uh, the sticky tape has failed. So I need to actually get this thing mounted up and proper. But for now, it just kind of floats around in the van. Another thing I can highly recommend is getting a bag like this and filling this bag with cash. I rarely carry cash on me in my day-to-day -day life, but in van life, when you're road tripping, you will get all kinds of random things that pop up in increments of $17 to $1 or even more where it's cash only. If you're going to a parking lot, if you're going to a park, if you're going through a toll, they still have cash only tolls that say exact change required and the toll is 175. <laughs> so have a little bag of change, have a bag of cash, lots of small bills, couple big bills, put it away, lock it away, but keep it easily accessible when you're going down the old New Jersey turnpike and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I gotta pay a toll. Then you just gotta make sure to keep topping things off and make sure the bag stays full. Another thing I like to carry in the van in case I get into one of those life-threatening physical altercations is some pepper spray. I've got it right here, very easy to access just in case stuff goes down. This is the Mace brand pepper gel. Supposedly has a pretty good stream. I haven't had to break it out on anybody yet, but I will. Ever since I saw a Russian road rage video where there was a guy with a tire iron coming in hot and a guy with a can of pepper spray Hit him in the face, knocked it down, diffused the situation. Much better using the non-lethal force. But if it is a life or death situation, you know, maybe you want more force. This is what I got. This is what I'm going to use. I've got one of these in the back in case something happens when I'm sleeping. I got one of these in the front in case something happens when I'm driving. When it comes to sunglasses, your best bet is to find a very reasonably priced pair and buy four of them. <laughs> That's what I've done with these Eddie Bauer sunglasses. I got them at Costco. It's very, very good to have many, many pairs of sunglasses. I've lost them, I've broken them. I feel like I'm good with my stuff, but sunglasses, they just take a beating. I, I think everyone can uh, agree, right? We've all had a way too expensive pair of sunglasses and then suddenly one day you sit on them and it's like, no. So go a little bit cheaper and get some backups. One thing I don't think I had for the first year or so in the van was a laundry bag. It, it's such a simple thing, especially I go mountain biking all the time. You come back, you're all sweaty and muddy and dirty. You kind of have to let that stuff dry out first and then put it in the laundry bag. But yeah, I really don't know what I was thinking or just never really realized. So in case you're like me, get yourself a laundry bag. But one thing I did have in the van the whole time was a clothesline. When your clothes get wet, whether sweaty or in the rain, you gotta hang them up. You gotta give them a chance to dry out or you are gonna be in a world of hurt with mold and bacteria and who knows what is gonna start growing in your van. A very simple solution. And there's a link in the description for all these products if I can find a link to them. And usually they're on Amazon with a little affiliate cut. If you buy it, I usually get 7% or something like that. So yeah, buy a clothesline, I get 50 cents. When things start to get pretty gross in the van and it's time for a cleanup, I have a pretty simple setup for cleaning up. A broom without a handle is very, very nice for sweeping things out. I've also got this little cordless vacuum, highly recommended for a van. And then for everything else, I bought a generic spray bottle at the Home Depot, maybe for three bucks or something. Put a little bit of Dawn dish soap in here, fill it up with water, and it's a really good cleaning solution for all kinds of stuff. And then I have a bunch of these microfiber cloths. I get them at Costco in a big old bag, and it makes for a really, really good cleaning setup. And now onto a little more serious subject of urinary catchment. I use a hydro flask as my pee jug. It's leaking, uh-oh, I just cleaned it. This is not the intended use, but oh man, I cannot find a better way to relieve myself on the road. Not while I'm driving, I pull over first, of course. This thing has a 32 ounce capacity and I've used it thousands of times at this point and I've never overflowed. Very easy to use with the big opening on top and with a little practice, doesn't matter your gender, anybody can use this. 
I certainly cannot live without it. I have been in some desperate situations where this thing has saved my life. You do have to stay on top of cleaning. You have to constantly clean. Every time you use, you clean, clean, clean. So it can be kind of a headache in that situation where just go use a bathroom if you can use a bathroom. I have saved the best for last. This clamp mount phone dongle thing is so awesome. I don't remember where I first came across this magical unicorn of a device, but I got it for my wife for cooking so she could look at her recipes at eye level instead of having it down on the table. And then I realized this thing would be perfect in the van to hold the phone up, to be able to watch stuff, have it hands-free, and just float in there. You've just got to find a surface to clamp to and you are good to go. They do lose a little bit of their stiffness after a while, but well worth it. The value that this thing delivers, especially in a van, is primo. I've got a bunch of other stuff in the van that I've bought over the years that works good and that I like, but all of this stuff was above that line. It was, I've got to tell you about it. I love it. It actually makes the road trips easier. Please believe me. Do me a favor. Go drive somewhere new. And maybe I'll see you on the freeway.